All right, I'm here today with Miles Sims, who was the on-set dresser in the film Breaking. Um, Miles was in my cinema appreciation class at Northwest Florida State College a few years ago. Hi, Miles. Hi, very happy to be here, very excited. <laughs> We're so excited to have you here and talk to my cinema appreciation students 10 years later about some projects that you've been working on. Yeah. <laughs> so, so thank you. Time, but I still remember a lot of things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thinking back 10 years ago when you took cinema appreciation at Northwest Florida State College, what films or theories do you remember the most about it? Okay, well, I was thinking about that a lot. And the biggest one that stuck out to me was the ideology and the um, IRS's, yeah, IRS, R RSA. IRS. And I yeah, yeah. <laughs> the apparatuses, the repressive and the state apparatuses. Yes. Yep, and and ideological it. state apparatuses. Yep, yep, exactly. <laughs> and I, um, I, we watched V for Vendetta. I don't know if you guys did that again. We did it, breaking for that. We did for for Marx, Althusser, and Omi and Wanan. Great. We did oh, breaking. Oh my gosh. Wow, that's kind of, that's funny. That's really funny that that's the thing that I remember. And <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and what else? Oh, what's funny is that even on ideology, um, when I transferred over to FSU, I did another film class and they covered Althusser and ideology and talked about that again. And I was like, I got this, I know this already. <laughs> and I wrote a paper, we had to pick a film to apply it to. And I think I did the Lego movie. All right. <laughs> I know that's like a really weird take, but if you watch it, like all I could think about was that theory was all ideology. And it's like with everything is awesome with like Emmett following <laughs> the directions, right. and like all of that and <laughs> present business and the robots, like everything is just, it, it applies. So it's just really funny. I, my film professor over there was just like, I've never seen this movie, but now I want to, weirdly. <laughs> but because uh, I'm a nerd, but. <laughs> I would love to read that paper, by the way, on the Lego movie. I'll send it to you, I'll send it to you. <laughs> Can I, can I read to you? I was just grading my the, some of the breaking papers today. Can I read you what one of my students wrote? Yes. Um, you know, using these theories. So they used uh, Marx, Althusser, and Omi and Wenant. The student writes, Breaking was an amazing movie. Um, it depicted real world events and described how people of color can be treated just because of their race. This movie has given me a new perspective on how I think about others are treated and how I have privilege that some others do not. I realize that capitalism today has problems because as the saying goes, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. There needs to be change in how people not the elite are treated and taken care of financially and socially. I've realized how RSAs are more aggressive to minorities and how they are treated more unfairly and that the United States has a long way to go if we want everyone to be equal in our country. So interesting, huh? How they, you know, they're still using those, um, those theories that you used. Yeah, well, also it came at a time where it was right after um, Black Lives Matter and all of the protests and everything. Um, I think we were working on it maybe a few months after that. I'm trying to think of the timeline here. That was the here. summer of 2020, right? So it was, yeah, yeah. So it was right after that. So that was already more powerful just being, doing that subject matter with that in mind and having it be so recent in our city was just wild. You know, I, I don't know if you guys saw all the protests that blocked yeah. off the streets and all of that during the height of COVID, but yeah, very impactful. The, the, the movie itself just, it hits you right, right in the heart, just hits you right here, just everything. And I don't know, I, there was a few scenes where, you know, I saw a, t a few tough grips in the room, shed a <laughs> tear or get a little choked up or have to walk away. Cause you know, John Boyega is a powerhouse. Um, and he really gave it his all. And it was incredible watching him work in general um, and taking on such a, you know, 
I, I want to say inspiring, but just like also tragic character, you know? Yeah. Uh, really, really powerful. He was really good. <laughs> yeah. So like, um, did, like, did, you, okay. did you have any experiences with, um, with some of those leads like John Boyega or um, Nicole um, who played Estelle? Um, yeah. um, I, I had little experiences with all of them. Um, but, you know, in a professional work setting, like, I, I don't, yeah, I, I was the onset dresser of the film. So, so with that meaning, like, you have your production designer, and then you have your decorator. Um, and then you have your set dressers that kind of like do the heavy lifting and bring everything in. And I was the onset dresser. So I'm kind of the direct link between the production designer and, you know, production, because they're usually not on set. You know, I'm, I'm the one that tinkers and is like the one man band that who, you know, move things for camera, adjust something that the director wants to change last minute, um, just anything and everything to do with the scene itself, like with everything in it. Um, so yeah, and that was pretty cool because I was directly linked with like the director. So I just basically sat next to Abby and the script supervisor and me, like we all had our little spots and we were constantly watching monitor to see if there's anything that needed to be adjusted or anything like that. So that being said, I was, I was there every single day, right on set, right behind monitor, right behind camera, right behind John <laughs> a couple times. Um, and so there was, there was a moment with John, which, you know, I commend him for because we were having a rough time with our, um, assistant director, the AD, he was just being a little difficult is the best way to describe it. And John kind of stood up for everybody and just kind of put him into place and was just like, you can't, you gotta, you gotta be more respectful than that. And I really appreciated it. Um, but also he just was incredibly like, just professional, just the best way I can describe it. Like he showed up on time. He did everything that he was supposed to. He gave it his all in every single scene. He just was very much in the zone. So that being said, in a professional setting, like we have to have respect for the actors and we can't like really engage with them if they're in character or if they're trying to get in even if they're offset and they're not in the scene, they're they're still, you know, in their mind palace is the best way I can describe it. So the moment I did have with him was af at the very end. Um, he was like getting on the elevator to leave. He said bye to people. And I accidentally, <laughs> like accidentally, but like I was kind of stoked, obviously. I was in the elevator and he hopped in the elevator with me. So we just had a little moment just to ourselves. And I just looked at him and I was like, you know, it was just kind of an, it was an honor, like watching you work because, wow, <laughs> just the performances uh, as y'all saw were just so heart-wrenching and so powerful. And just as an actor, bringing in all of those emotions to the surface and having them there for so long in the conditions that we had, like he just really knocked it out of the park. And I, I just haven't, I haven't seen that kind of powerful performance in a long time, like since, before and since. So he just was incredible. And then Nicole was really sweet. I like mentioned the Sleepy Hollow that she was on and stuff. And she was like, oh, thank you so much. Like that was really sweet. <laughs> um, and then I didn't get to, I didn't get to talk to, um, oh my gosh, why am I blanking on her name right now? Salinas who played Rosa. Selena's, um, I know her by her character name and I didn't want to call her by her character. <laughs> um, yeah, she was really sweet. Like uh, the hair and makeup artists I was pretty close with and they really liked her and they've said that she was no nothing but sweet, but you know, it was, it was hot. It was hot for all of us. It was 114 degree heat in the daytime, you know, um, outside. And so there were some little cool areas and stuff like that, but inside that bank there was there was not very little to a ac for the first few days 
um yeah. it got a little bit better as it went on because you know the, <laughs> once the actors say something they finally make changes um <laughs> but <laughs> it was it was pretty hot it was the middle of august and the middle of summer and just yeah 114 degree heat so in those conditions saying that like it was difficult for everyone so the fact that they had the performances that they had were just amazing yeah. um, so where did yeah. you shoot we shot in Woodland Hills um, at, at, it's actually kind of funny. We had like that SWAT team uh, encampment area was right across the street from the bank. And that bank set, like you asked me like what, if it was a set or if it was a real bank and it was an old real bank. And we must have done a really good job making it a Wells Fargo because we had to have a PA post up at the front door because few people would try to come in and cash their check. <laughs> we were just like, clearly there's cameras everywhere and this is not a bank, but like, thank you for the compliment. Like people were very real. You did um, your job well. <laughs> we did our job well, we did our job really well, which I'm proud of, but yeah, that was insane. <laughs> <laughs> they were all just incredible incredible like I, I don't know I like you know I'm not talking it up I'm not like you know it, it, they were really just incredible people and were really professional and fantastic oh and then Connie Brighton oh my god that was that was the fun day just like being around Connie because she's just in my eyes just so glamorous and beautiful and she just was so sweet to everyone she talks to everyone that was around her she wasn't like she didn't keep to herself she was just very sweet to everybody and just made it known like hey how are you like i see you how are you which was i appreciated it because you don't that's, get a lot. <laughs> yeah that's nice to know she she had that small part of lisa larson but she was just mesmerizing in it right the way she she played that part yeah. and she all right just, yeah knowing the respect and the impact that she had was just really cool. Yeah, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, you mentioned that you sat by the director, Abby, um, who she directed the film and she co-wrote the script. Can you tell us what it was like working with her? I love her. <laughs> I love her so much. Um, I have never worked with the director that has been as like so kind in general and cared so much about her crew and everyone around and like and the subject matter and just having so much respect for it and wanting to do it right and wanting to do it I don't know just not in a like Hollywood way doing it in the correct right way like it was almost like real like almost reality you know everything was very meticulously almost as is like from the photos side by side of certain things and just the story. We had a um, the first day we were shooting, which I think is wild. The first day we were shooting was one it was the anniversary of like the day of like an, I can't remember what year anniversary because I think I would think it was 2017 so the third year anniversary of the events that happened on that day. We filmed on the first day like, and it happened to be the anniversary. That was not really planned, um, but it, that was kind of wild. And we all had, um, she made like, she made, she, uh, sorry. We were all like, student, we were all there doing a safety meeting. And then she was just like, okay, I, this is really important, you know, film. And today is a very important day. And we need to have like a moment of silence and a moment of prayer just for Brian and just to, you know, just feel this space and to feel it and, you know, just to know the impact that we're having and getting his story out there is just really important. And I just really appreciated that speech and all of us just having that moment of silence because it wasn't just like a normal movie. You know, it was some, it, we're really telling somebody's real life story and something that really happened to them. So it's just, it's more closer, it's closer to home, you know? Um, so that was, that was really lovely. And then uh, she just, she was just fantastic. Just so kind to everyone. She would never yelled. She never was 
she never seemed stressed. She never seemed frantic. She was always very calm and collected and she knew what she wanted, which was, you know, kind of hard in this business with directors. They like to change their mind very quickly. Um, <laughs> But she was very like understanding of just how, what it takes to make a film and what is possible and what is not. And that also is just very important as a director to know. Um, and she just had a good relationship with John too. I would always see them like joking and laughing and stuff like that. And they really cared about it, like what they were doing. You could just tell, which was really neat. That's great. Thanks for sharing that. Yeah. So, um... I first saw this film in January 2022 through I had a streaming ticket at the Sundance Film Festival. It was originally titled 892, yeah. which we learned in the film is is worth more than Brian's life in our current system. Um, and then the movie's title was changed to Breaking. Um, do you have yeah. any thoughts about any of the, the titles or or any of that? I do, and I hope I don't get in trouble for saying this. Um, I personally didn't like the change because I feel like it took away the power of that number. Um, uh, you know, it when we were doing it, it was like, oh, it makes sense. Like when you come to that line and then he's just like, how much money? And it's like $892 and you're just like, oh, like that's when that click moment, like, oh, wow. Like that's what, cost him his life was that amount of money and so that's more important than you know a buzzword like breaking my personal opinion but yeah that's my thought on that one I hope I don't get in trouble for that but no, yeah thank you for sharing that um I I just remember you know seeing it at Sundance and just I, I couldn't breathe for about an hour and a half I mean the script was so well written and then and then you know that revelation of that number is just so powerful i also had a, a powerful experience um sh you know screening the film for my two film classes this time at the at the end you know i usually stop the film run down those film steps <laughs> and and yes. i ask you know what did you think of the movie but this time i came down and i looked out into, into the faces of those students and many of them were Cry, openly crying like they had they traumatized like I was when I watched it <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> uh, I was slightly like I just I was so I was an emotional wreck like just in general when I saw it because I saw it the day before it was released um in theaters and whew, it got me like it it got me during filming like and usually that doesn't happen because you're doing things over and over and over again. You're not, it, it doesn't like it hits you the first time and then you just kind of get worn in like a rubber or like a glove. But in this case, not at all. I just was crying all the time. Um, there was one scene in particular, uh, the very last scene where, you know, he's with his daughter in the bed, almost ghost-like and they're having that little moment. Um, being in that room, I like, I'm gonna get teary eyed thinking about it now. Like it just, yeah, there was not a dry eye in that room after that scene. We all had to kind of take a minute just to breathe, <laughs> like you said. And that was just like, you know, after three or four takes, we still were just, <laughs> just <laughs> crying. Like it was just, I, I had to walk away from monitor a couple of times in a few scenes and I was just like, this is too much. I need to breathe. <laughs> it just gets you. Um, it really gets you, yeah. which is great, which is we did our, we did what we were supposed to do, you, you sure know, to have, have that reaction is so important because that's what we wanted. We want you to feel that feeling because it is so sad. Yeah. Um, speaking of sad, I, I totally forgot to mention Michael K. Williams. Um, he was, he was a sweetheart. Um, there was a scene where he was a, he was a great sport too. Um, Cause there was one scene where he literally had to get in the mud and wrestle pig. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, that was that was really funny. It was a really funny <laughs> one. Like it was the one like lighthearted moment in that whole thing. But we it was a day of it. But he just he went for it every time. <laughs> he, and he tried to keep that pig in that pen so many times, and he fell in the mud so many times, and he just kept it. <laughs> was determined to get that right thing and then he was just like all right man I'm tired of falling in this mud <laughs> we're like we hear you we're tired of standing in this mud so um but that was really fun and then just you know having a pig day on set like having the animals was that was kind of that was a fun <laughs> I know I'm talking about a sad thing but like you know he passed two weeks after production which was that was kind of wild as well like because he and I like I think I talked to him the most honestly because there was a scene where he was in a cop the cop car you know talking to the different detectives and on the phone and stuff and that was a long scene and I had to go in and clean the windows on the car and make sure everything was good for the camera and so we would like sit and talk for a little bit in between takes and he was just very cool he was just very cool chill guy um so it's like it's hard you know that he passed like two weeks after we were yeah. just like we were just having a conversation you were you were alive and well and wrestling pigs like what the hell <laughs> what yeah. the hell happened that yeah. was kind of he left us a great gift with that performance though of bernard with that being his last one i'm kind of on like happy not happy but just honored that it was that was the message that he's leaving you know yeah um, which is there anything else you'd like us to know about this film or would you like to tell us a little bit more about what breaking what this film means to you? Um, well, uh, I have a lot, a lot of thoughts going through my mind. Um, just like on a personal level, uh, it was a very challenging film for me physically, emotionally. Um, cause it was about two months to a little over two months of production. And like I said, we were in that bank every single day. Um, and it felt like very much a dog day afternoon. It was hot. It was grueling work. Um, a lot of, a lot of heavy lifting, a lot of, a lot of stuff for one person to be doing, but, uh, I got my union days, uh, to get into the local 44 art department union out here in LA. Um, which is a really big deal because now I can work on like the big stuff that everybody's heard of that knows like all the big TV shows, all the networks, all the production companies and things like that. So yeah, uh, it personally, like, you know, emotionally, it's uh, emotionally, I love that movie too. But then like on a professional level, it gave me the days that I needed to join the union, which has really changed my career in a wonderful way. Um, so it's just all around like it's so close to my heart so like it, that's what it means so much to me in general and I know I get emotional but yeah it's just it has a, I, it's my little baby <laughs> I know it's Abby's baby but like it was my baby too yeah just being there because I was just at monitor every day I was doing everything every day so yeah it was really it was really good movie and really impactful and it means something which is you know Hollywood's great and we love it but there's very few projects that come along that like really mean something at the end yeah. of the day and really hit your heart the way that it does and how close to home it is and and it being on true events like this really happened to a person and it is like mirroring like the Black Lives Matter movement in that way like I it almost carries it with it and I know it wasn't meant for that but just the timing of it all was just very it was a movie that we needed right now yeah I completely agree thank you for sharing that um last question you're living in LA right now um what what projects are you currently working on so currently I'm working on, um, I'm actually working at the Sony prop house, which is very fun um, and cool. I get to see Spider-Man every day, which is neat. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's really cool. I'm doing that right now. But recently uh, I worked on these two, pro my most recent like big films that I worked on was The Pool Man with uh, Chris Pine. 
It's uh, he wrote it and di is directed it and starred in it. It should be coming out hopefully in the next year. I hope so. Um, had a fun little moment with Chris, which was amazing and made my life. Um, I gave him a little origami heart. If you watch the movie, you'll understand what it means. But uh, I put I made him like a little origami heart out of one of the pages of the script. And he really appreciated that and loved it and like hugged me. And I was like, oh my God, you're Chris Pine. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, so I was the onset dresser for that. And then I was the onset dresser for um, Old Dads. It's this new film by Bill Burr. I also think it hasn't been released yet. Uh, hopefully this coming year, if not, yeah. Uh, but it's Bill Burr and he wrote it and directed it and starred in it. And that was fun. Uh, that was a fun one to work on. I'm actually in the movie um, in a scene, I think at the very end with him, we're all like cheersing around, but uh, so I'm like standing right next to him. So you'll see me, which is cool because oh. I'm, I'm a behind the camera person. I'm not in front of the camera. <laughs> I'm very nervous. So I'm really glad that this is Zoom and not like <laughs> of a bunch of people. Uh, that's why I do what I do. So... <laughs> Well, Miles, you have been wonderful. Thanks for giving us your time tonight to talk a little bit about breaking. Um, I'm, I, I just, am, I'm so proud of you, and um, I, I, I'm just, it makes me so happy to to think, you know, when I knew you back in cinema appreciation, and now, you know, all the great things that you're that you're doing. Keep keep it up. That means the world to me. You have no idea because. What's funny is that when we first talked about this and stuff, I told my brother about it and everything. And he was like, wait, isn't that your favorite professor from when you were in school? Like, yes. like, yeah, my favorite professor that literally inspired me to do more in film because of your film club, because of your film classes. And I took, I think I took, I, I took your humanities class, I took your film class and I was a part of your film club. Um, you just it, everything that you said made an impact on me and it just really soaked it in like a sponge and I transferred to after I got my AA at Northwest Florida State College um, I transferred to FSU and I continued on with film I did editing writing and media with a minor in film studies and then I also volunteered with the film school there that's very big um, and very prestigious and I couldn't get in because didn't have any experience in film but now I do so ha ha, <laughs> 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 ha, -ha. but um, it really like carried on from that like that kind of was the spark that grew that made me want to keep doing this like I didn't know what I wanted to do in a film but I knew I wanted to be a part of it and that was because of your class so wow that means a lot to me that you even that you even reached out to me about this was just an honor like I can't say it enough it just means the world to me I appreciate that I can't wait to see other other work that you do no hopefully we can do this again in another film and maybe one of the other two <laughs> so we'll see yeah Thank you, Miles. Thanks so much.